Um, so first of all, I'm, I'm aware that uh, David Cronenberg has been a large contributor for you guys for, for many years. Uh, a lot of his uh, materials from the films have been stored in the film reference library that you could come and visit. So I'm wondering how long has this exhibition been in the works and why now? Um, what made you finally get to that point where it's ready yeah. or you're, you're ready to start you know, revealing it? We've probably been gestating, ruminating on this possible exhibition for about yeah. 20 years now when we started back then, started to collect David's works. And we knew there was something really special about the objects in his films, that they actually carried a weight, carried a narrative like nothing else. Yeah. And so, and, and as we, they started to arrive in our offices, we felt that even more strongly. You know, we would take something out of a box and we would recall the film. It was almost like magic how that worked. Yeah. And so over the years, we've uh, allowed uh, very few, but some of the objects to actually travel in some very specific exhibitions in different parts of the world. They've been sort of dealing with this idea of the magic of cinema, yeah. and we've seen the effects, you know, and how the uh, how they, the these objects actually resonate with audiences, and it is powerful. Mm-hmm. So when we were actually conceiving of Tiff Bell Lightbox, this building of ours in the center of Toronto, we actually always knew we wanted to have an exhibition space. And we knew we wanted to have an exhibition space in order to actually do this David Cronenberg show. Yeah. Um, it wasn't going to be first. We wanted to get in here, have a couple of years to actually uh, you know, um, build up our reputation, to actually uh, be able to experiment with other shows like Tim Burton. Grace Kelly, James Bond, which have all kind of come through here over the years. But we, but we also, during that whole time, we're building up the ideas about how we want to deal with David Cronenberg. And the big aha moment is when we actually happened upon this idea of hungering, hankering for the next stage of human evolution in his films. And that that was going to be a wonderful guiding concept, which provides the kind of the sense of wonder, the sense of science fiction in his movies, but also the sense of danger that you actually get from his films as well. And so after that happened, we were able to start assembling all these various objects. We knew the loans we wanted from around the world, from many of his collaborators, that all of the other parts of the picture came together, including a virtual museum, an amazing in immersive interactive game called Body Mind Change, which is living in our fourth floor gallery, um, these, and these amazing film series and books that are going to be coming out as well. We also had a concept for, to actually speak to the rest of the world about a Canadian artist, perhaps one of our most important artists, and um, why we value and treasure him. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I have to say that for myself, even, I, I mean, I've seen most of his films, perhaps not all of them, but as I'm in there, I feel like I've, I'm immersing myself into his films. And it, these images, these objects, like you're saying, they're recalling... Um, you know, associations from my memory and bringing up certain thoughts that I may have had at that time. And I'm remembering, you know, that moment that I was in the cinema watching this film and, and seeing it. So I think it, it does have this sense of, um, of fanaticism to it as well. Well, we have this art show over at MoCA uh, right now called David Cronenberg Transformation, which we launched back in September. Yeah. One of the artists in it, Jeremy Shaw, said, the thing about Cronenberg films is... is Years later, you realize somehow he's directly implanted thoughts and ideas in your head without you knowing it. It's a good way you know, of And I it. think that that's probably why when people come to this show, they, it actually takes them through their own personal journey, through their own yeah. nightmares, and through their own perhaps you know, you know, more uh, ribald experiences as well. Definitely. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, I'm just wondering... Um, this, this retrospective, his interest of film retrospective, it's really uh, almost a, a lamentation of, of his life. Um, because you're putting his whole... Yet, he's still alive. No lamentation, but a personal uh, <laughs> yeah, indictment yeah. of his life. So yeah, I wonder absolutely. how he might feel or how uh, you guys have spoken, if he's expressed anything about how he feels that he is still alive. Oh, no, David Cronenberg is so anxious about it. this. He sort of he's, hates the idea of being memorialized before, before he's, he's passed, passed on. You know? Exactly. And in fact, he's responded to it by how we end the show, which is yeah. a 12-minute film that he's made specifically for this called The Nest, so that which actually really that. deals with this anxiety, this anxiety about having this exhibition, this almost like... <laughs> huge memorial for yeah. you while well, you're still alive and kicking and working exactly okay well I guess Good. I have to see the nest yes exactly yeah, come on back to know about <laughs>